tonight on Cheap Seats. I think the only things you need to get into this competition are a goatee, a gun, and a healthy dose of simmering rage. Are they shooting PlayStation icons? No, they're taking an IQ test. She's on fire right now. She's gonna nail that target. Ah, jeez. Wow. Off the wall, behind the back, into the red ring, nothing but clay. High five, old man. Hey, welcome to Cheap Seats, the show that stubbornly yet unapologetically refuses to privatize Medicare and makes fun of old weird sporting events. Our show today will explore what happens when you take weapons of minor destruction and create sports around them. That's right, it's the very first great outdoor game from the year 2000. We got chainsaws, rifles, and axes. Three things the feds would probably find if they raided Tom Selleck's compound. Well, that and about 50 clip-on mustaches, but that's another story. Today, it's all about good, clean fun. Now, here's what to look for. Here's what to look for. Here's what to look for. Keep an eye out for the goatee to competitor ratio. It's almost one to one, and that includes the women's and the kids' events. Also watch for the complete disregard for safety when it comes to the weather. Now, I can understand outdoor purists wanting to play in the rain, sleet, or snow. However, these people are firing loaded weapons near the fans. No one's going to get upset if you bring out the tarp or at least retract the dome. All right. In the immortal words of Michael Moore, you can pry this remote from my cool dead hands. It's the great outdoor games, people, from Lake Placid. Oh! Darts? No, it's the Silhouette Olympics. Sounds like the 90210 guitarist is still getting some work. Was that a Puma? Silhouetted. Welcome back to lovely Lake Placid. This is probably the biggest sporting event to ever hit Lake Placid. Do you believe in rednecks? Yes! For the call, we join Bill Clement and Sherry Legate. Nice shot, Shadow Man. The Green Monster? Many of the best shooters in the world are here to compete. and they Good, because it's not like we need them in Iraq or anything. Each shooter will have a bank of ten targets. These targets are different... Are they shooting PlayStation icons? No, they're taking an IQ test. ...of their targets in the bank of targets before they begin on the dueling tree. The dueling tree... I love that book, The Dueling Tree. Come, little boy, and shit on my stump. Nah, I'd rather just fire a rifle at you. Your target, it swings around into the scored position. This is just like the NFL QB challenge, only deadlier and without Cordell Stewart's incessant whining. Sherry Legate figured would be a favorite in this Doesn't matter. These guys are all going to lose to Duke in the semis anyway. We will take on a man named Bruce Pyatt. My name is Bruce Pyatt. I'm a full-time police officer. Don't believe me? Here's my badge. Second job, I do professional shooting. When I'm not at work as a police officer... I leave my gun and uniform on the front lawn. Shooting, and that's every vacation and holiday I have goes towards shooting, so my family doesn't get much of me. Except when I'm shooting at them. I'll be able to take care of them the way I should. I'm guessing his kid got the Red Ryder submachine gun for Christmas. He's in psych-up mode right now because he's getting ready to face Bob Mastriani in the first round. I don't think he should be listening to System of a Down right now. And should the cameraman be standing right in front of him? Now, Bruce Pyatt, he's a pistol shooter. When we talked to him earlier today, he said, this is just shooting a pistol with a long barrel. And that was just like telling a bad joke with a long punchline. Listen, it's not me against the competitor. It's me against the targets. And right now... Are they shooting a xylophone? He's already on the dueling tree. He is just blowing by Pyatt. And that's what makes Mastriani good. What makes him good? The fact that he's good? It was actually a little disturbing how good he was. Seal off all clock towers immediately. Knocks out Bruce Pyatt and in the process will advance to the quarterfinals. Notice how smooth Mastriani is. Everything is motionless, including Except that. second reload. Freeze it. 
He is laying an obscene amount of cheek fat on that rifle. They say that's the key to his success. Who says that? He just they... got its poetry in motion. He's like a very dangerous limerick. All right, fast forward. Fast okay, forward. all right. <laughs> opponent in the finals is Doug Koenig. One of these two men will win the gold. The other one will win the silver. You talk about intensity, Sherry. This no, you talk easy. about intensity. I'm still on break. They're fast, they're accurate, and they're used to working under speed. You're gonna so you can use performance enhancers. Sweet. The challenge for both of these shooters has been controlling their nerves while they were waiting in the tent. And don't be fooled by the times of the earlier rounds because different strategies lead to different times. This should be I'm easy. guessing the best strategy would be to get the fastest time. In preparation. Bob Mastriani. I think the only things you need to get into this competition are a goatee, a gun, and a healthy dose of simmering rage. Start for both of them. The magazines came right up into the guns. No and what magazines would those be? Tiger Beat? Modern Bride. Now Koenig has to catch up, and that is unusual. Doug Koenig is missing targets. Okay, if even we can't hear the gunshots, then why are these guys wearing ear protectors? Target down, second target down. And Koenig is now shooting Mastriana's dueling tree on the right. And Mastriana, it's done. Look at all my credentials. Look at him, damn it. His girlfriend, Patty, has reason to celebrate. Because Bob Mastriani has won the gold medal. Doug Caney goes home with the... Smell my armpit. Smell him or I'll shoot you. Could he have celebrated any later? On TV. Ugh, oh, he's going to propose? No! Will you marry me? <laughs> How sweet would it be if he was listening to yes in those headphones right now? Roundabout? Leave it. Okay? Well, yeah. All right, let's go back to that marriage proposal. So many mistakes were made here. For such a sharp shooter, I mean, he was awfully sloppy in the biggest shot of his life. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin here. You don't have to know, Jay, because we're going to put this break down in the hands of a professional. Thanks, guys. Now, what we have here is a failure to communicate literally. Number one, if you're going to ask the most important question in your life, you might want to take your headphones off so you can hear the answer. Number two, no ring? Come on, at least put a bullet on a necklace, give her another press credential, something. You gotta display some tangible token of your love. Number three, it was a pretty weak proposal, wasn't it? Down on one knee, the standard, hey, will you marry me? Spice it up a bit. How about, honey, my rifle's jammed. Could you check out this ammo clip? Oh my God, how did this ring get in there? Look, a wedding proposal is a private moment. I know public proposals are a long tradition at sporting events, but if done wrong, it's like getting married at 3 a.m. in Vegas. Only less classy, guys. Thanks, big man. All right, more superfluous gunplay on cheap seats right after this. Late on cheap seats. Can't we get these guys in SWAT or something more productive? Now, what they didn't tell you is that Harry Burnsworth got his start at Zingerman's Deli. Look at how lean he's slicing that log. And we're back. You ready for some more outdoor games? A little hot saw competition, perhaps? Yes, but only if I could hear some stilted scripted testimonials endorsing these games from the mouths of athletes who participate in another sport that derives much of its popularity from the promise of terribly violent accidents. Sorry. All we got are these lame promos from a couple of NASCAR drivers. Well, I guess that'll work, too. Hi, I'm Daryl Walter. You know... Daryl. Daryl. But I'd kind of like to feel the response of one of those chainsaws. Wow. Yes, because Wapow is the sound a chainsaw makes. It's a shame this guy couldn't get any sponsors. Yeah, I'm surprised the Spider-Man movie didn't put a web graphic on his face. We are ready to go now with our final two competitors. 
That's Jim Taylor from Redding, California. And that's his son, desperately vying for his father's attention. I love you, Daddy, almost as much as you love wood chopping. This is gonna be a great race. It's the ultimate in athleticism, operating a power saw. This guy is so consistent, very Unreal. That guy is a sponsor on his buzz saw? This sport has officially lost all its integrity. Sweet chaps. Will they be riding the chainsaws? Everyone has their ear protection in place here. Man. Not to block out the saws. It's for the country music that usually accompanies these games. Don't start yet. I just have to run to the bathroom. Without a muffler on them, we might add. Motocross bikes have a muffler. Little yoga before we start. Downward saw. One, two, go. Now, what they didn't tell you is that Harry Burnsworth got his start at Zingerman's Deli. Look at how lean he's slicing that log. Is it over? I guess. And some of the crowd goes sort of wild-ish. So he's not going to propose to his girlfriend? I thought that was like a mandatory thing for outdoor games winners. Hot sauce! Oh, baby! You know, I just hear the word hot sauce and I'm thinking one thing. Those saws are so hot. How hot are they? They're so hot, I heard they had a three-episode arc on Entourage. No. Oh, yes. I heard Turtle tried to hit that. No. Oh, yes. Those saws are so hot. <laughs> they are so hot. They were found at the bottom of Ruben Rivera's bag next to Derek Jeter's glove. He's the f***ing Winona Ryder of baseball. Damn stupid. Now let's hear from our gold medal winner. That was the finals? The Nobody one. seemed that excited. Yeah, I figured that was just practice. Well, in the hot saw, it, you know, anything can happen. You might That's right. You can lose an entire hand or just a thumb or just toss the saw to a street performer and watch him juggle it with an apple and a bowling ball while riding a unicycle. Congratulations, Ted. This would be a good time to remind the folks out there that according to the National Fish and Wildlife... I miss Magnum P.I. There are over 10 million competitive rifle shooters out there here in North America alone. Yeah. Which does not include people in cults holed up in the compounds of their charismatic leaders. People who are dog enthusiasts get the feeling the people here in North America really enjoy their outdoors. But it's just not a North American thing. As a matter of what? fact, the great outdoors... People in other countries go outside too? I don't believe it! Why must they copy everything we do? In a world of really old globes, people who look American live in countries that aren't America. One man seeks to change all that. Paul Hogan is Chopperdile Dundee. The North American choppers is that they have grown up with this sport. You can go anywhere, any weekend, almost... A Connecticut chopper? It's like an Alabama yachter. Young children start around five years of age and up. So it's not really five. Australian wood choppers um, do a lot more competition. Is the cameraman eight inches tall or did this guy just chop off his legs? And we uh, cut a lot of firmer timber. Hey, buddy, American wood is plenty firm, despite what all those TV ads suggest. We're always tough sawyers. You put up a big hot saw, a big single buck. Just different events that the U.S. excels in. What's with all the low angle shots? Are they afraid we won't respect these guys? That's actually a good point. Coming up on Cheap Seats. Mark my words, one of these women will lose a foot today. And they'll still be taller than us. Hey, welcome back. Now, I have a question. If a redneck gets shot in the forest... Does anybody hear it? I have a better question. Do you care? Do you care that the largest chainsaw ever constructed measures 22 feet 11 inches long and weighs three tons? Do 
you care that there were over 28,000 chainsaw-related emergency room visits in 2003, requiring an average of 110 stitches each? Do you care that the winner of the hot sauce competition in 2003 was Mike Sullivan, who once played for a Cincinnati Reds minor league team and only had four hits and 55 at bats? But the good news is that he could actually build the very bench that he warmed. All right? Who's up for some women's endurance? Right here. Thank you, Mark Malone. We are back at the Oval for more action from the women's endurance women's? event. Women's? Bottom part of this quarterfinals bracket. Cherie Taylor from New Zealand going up against one of Jay the... Jay London? Thank you. Lori Ransom. Cherie likes New Zealand. These women were all probably former magician's assistants. And now it's their turn to do the sawing. She's fidgeting more than Turk Wendell playing in Sergio Garcia's celebrity golf tournament. Mark my words, one of these women will lose a foot today. And they'll still be taller than us. Pretty much full time with the Timber Sports Lori Ransom, a science teacher from Gabriel's, New York. I bet she could dissect the hell out of a frog. Lori Ransom is swinging extremely well. She's right on the end of the handle. Are the black pants too formal? I could watch this all day. Well, at the rate they're going, that may happen. The chips are clearing well for her. Cherie needs to concentrate a little bit on her on hand. It looks like... Cherie also needs to go back to community college and learn how to type. Turn just about together. Lori may have the edge here. Is that a chopping pun? I don't know. I stopped listening. All the homework in the front. As you can understand, you must cut the wood somewhere, so while you're comfortable and hitting well in the front, you might... Somebody put an axe to my head. And possibly if you cut a little more than you thought you might, you can take a smaller chip in the back, which of course, if it's a little shorter, it's easier. Oh, God, there's more? I'm going to go ahead and say running should not be a part of this competition. At all. The dock there. She made sure she... He's like one of those guys that squeegees your windshield at traffic lights. There you go, ma'am. All oiled up. Now, can I have a dollar? Not now. Too busy enduring. Well, Cherie Taylor, she's uh, quite a tall lady, about 5'11", about a little over 200 pounds, maybe around 220, I think. But That's right like there, saying Shaq's a little over six foot eight. I think Lori Ransom is having a nervous breakdown. Which is actually supposed to tear the wood out. If the pig has an order to cut it, that rake is going to hook there again. Getting tired, Tommy, the technique's going away. More? Would anybody ever have to chop this much wood in real life? She's on fire right now. She's going to nail that target. Ah, jeez. Why did she even bother? Now she's going to make her run for the axe. That's it? That's the end. Lori's not even going to throw the axe? Uh, Lori's slipping into a coma right now. The shooter takes a great deal of focus. Whoa, who just tried to shoot Mark Malone? Bobby Brister. Dedication and focus. Balancing the two has become a love for Linda Joy. I think they just put Lori Ransom out of her misery. Cue the outdoorsy music. Thank you. I hated Cold Mountain. Hi, I'm Linda Joy, and I'm a shotgun competitor. Take I that, Outdoor Games California. logo. And I moved to Arizona about 10 years ago to paint the Grand Canyon. And when I'm I done with that, I'll put some curtains on the Cumberland Gap. At six, I knew I was going to be an artist. My other passion is shooting. And split oh. screens. I first got started in shooting about 10 years ago when a boyfriend introduced me to skeet shooting as a birthday present. For birthday, his birthday, I shot him. The next year, I got jewelry. I was going to be shooting for quite a long time. There are certain visual training techniques that I use to help me in my shooting. I'll take a, a, a letter like an A or an, a B. We on know what shooting. letters are, Linda. Goes around, I'll focus on that. I'm convinced that my visual exercises have made me a better shooter because... They've certainly made you weirder. Who are you, Tom Wolf? I feel that I see the target just a little bit crisper. Enough with the split screen. Just because she has good peripheral vision doesn't mean we do. ...maintain a better focus. I think shooting has actually helped me 
also become a better painter. Because, because I shoot those who are more talented than me. That you have to have. Honestly, this woman can consolidate her hobbies if she just took up paintball. The southwestern landscape, and I have to paint it. When I see my painting Weirdness. and exhibit, I'm putting my inner self out on display for the whole world to see. The whole world? Really? Why don't you start with your whole family and then work your way up? Pressure of competition and, and how you react to the outcome. So the combination of my painting and shooting... Leaves me no time to contemplate that I will be alone for the rest of my life. He needs to be wearing a hat to keep the rain off. When did she become his grandmother? Even if he was wearing a hat, he'd probably be wearing it backwards. When did Clement become his grandfather? Hey, welcome back to the show. We are watching the 2000 Great Outdoor Games, ESPN's inaugural coverage of what has become a programming staple. Now, what you are about to witness may be the most crucial mistake ever made at a sporting event. Bigger than the Weber timeout? Bigger. Bigger than that stupid Leon Lett play? Bigger. Bigger than that even stupider Leon Lett play? Bigger. Bigger than the White Sox shorts experiment? Not that big. Just watch. Obviously, the conditions here in the finals are not ideal. But we only rented this space for the day, and the Horde Tour is moving in tomorrow, so uh, we got to keep it going. This is his inexperience. Even though he hit that shot, he needs to be wearing a hat to keep the rain When did she his become hat? his grandmother? Well, he's 17. Even if he was wearing a hat, he'd probably be wearing it backwards. <laughs> and when did Clement become his grandfather? Great five. Yay, he didn't shoot me. Reflexes, and that's what's saving him oh. now is those reflexes. I hate you, pet boys. Reflexes of water are really picking up on his glasses. And it's going to bother him later on down. No, Doug has a hat on. Doug Doug's the good grandson. He's a doctor. He's married to a nice girl. You sit at home all day, Dustin, with your no hat. You wouldn't expect an eight-time state of Oklahoma champion to make the mistake of not wearing a hat on a day like today. Well, enough about the hat. This is skate shooting, not a Kangol fashion show. Oh, Sherry, listen to this. Doug Fuller is turning and telling the judge that he did not hit that. He just said it broke before I hit it, so they called a no bird. What a gentleman. He's going to try. He's a gentleman. He wears a hat. Isn't he just perfect? Well, Doug Fuller has the reputation of being one of the great gentlemen oh. in this sport, and he just If he was such a gentleman, he'd give that hat to Dustin. Hit that target. When Doug Fuller wins oh. the match, he wins it fair and square. A good five-ring shot. He Are all the competitors sharing one poncho? Wishes Dustin Long good luck. Long yeah, good luck, you Jose Vizcaino sunglass-wearing freak. And he misses his first shot. Should have worn a hat. Oh. Got his second shot in the three ring. He's being a little precise in his shooting. Oh. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? He missed the third shot. Now these are. But he picked off a hiker who strayed from the trail, so he's got to be pleased about that. I think the pressure is starting to settle in. So Doug Fuller here with a chance to. There, he got a hat. So shut up, Sherry. Here in the gold medal match of the shotgun event at the Great Outdoor oh. Games. A very smooth shot by Doug. He's going in for the kill. And this is the he is. Look out, Dustin. This time it's personal. Has shown any signs of feeling the pressure. Doug Fuller has taken advantage of the opportunity. You bet he is, and he's not going to oh. cut Dustin any slack. He knows if he were a real gentleman, he'd let the other guy win. Stay into these targets hard. He's oh. got some focus, and he hit that oh. rabbit in the center. Yeah. Seriously, they couldn't have just waited till the rain stopped? They've called Mets games for less rain than this. Trying to stay dry here on the call shot portion of the event. This is like the outdoor games version of horse. Actually, I think the outdoor games version of horse involves shooting a horse. He missed this shot, and this is where that hat might have come in to help him. Shut up about the hat. He's got a gun. He could have seen the shot a little better. Doug hit a nice three ring. 
Another three points for him. And that means Fuller is up by six. So Dustin off the wall, behind the back, into the red ring. Nothing but clay. High five, old man. Well, let's see what Doug Fuller does. He is called yellow three. He's going for a three-pointer to put him back up by four. Oh. A great Can't we get these guys in SWAT or something more productive? Well, here's what this boils down to. If Dustin Long misses this target, he loses. And Doug Fuller is our gold medal winner. Red three. Did she sound happier? Okay, you were right about the hat. Look for her hat theory in next month's New England Journal of Skeet Shooting. Dustin Long from California, he is going to pick up the silver. Well, Scott Robertson has got to be psyched about that finish. Yeah, especially since he shot yesterday when it was sunny out. He was the gentleman from Oklahoma, a diabetic whose vision is sometimes affected. What? Okay, that's information I would have liked to have had before the competition started. Come on, Clement. You can't bury that lead. That's like finding out your best friend from high school is an undercover cop when you're a senior at the only party you ever decided to throw. I mean, why shouldn't you have thrown that party? Your parents were out of town, it was senior year, and now you're screwed. You got to do 600 hours of community service because Scott Jeffer went all 21 Jump Street on you. All That's right, information Randy, I Randy, had the right Randy. to know about. Randy! I had Haby. Okay! Let's give out some cheapies. Cheapy for craziest eyes. That's got to go to Linda Joy. Marty Feldman would have told her to tone it down. Cheapy for lamest effort. I got to go with Cherie Taylor's axe toss. She could have politely declined and saved us all the misery. Wow, I'm going to go with the post-shooting marriage proposal. Similarly, she could have politely declined and it would have saved us all the misery of having to watch it. Well, that'll do it for this episode of Cheap Seats. Remember, if it's raining outside, if you've got a firearm in your hand and diabetes is impairing your vision, for God's sakes, wear a hat. Pull!